Hey, what's happening, everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy, Muhammad, Premier Leather Crafters. And today, I, w I was working on a piece today, and I thought it would be a great time to show you guys about beveling. Um, one thing about beveling is uh, a lot of things what I see with a lot of newer crafters, a lot of new people who are trying to get off into uh, doing pictorials and artwork and things like that, they, one, they don't have the right tools to do the that particular type of job two um they they hit the pieces too hard and entirely too hard and what i mean by that is you know they'll come through and they know they want the bevel but what they do is they leave the impression of the tool sometimes you can go too deep the thing about um beveling and backgrounding and different things like that is you 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 want to know how hard to hit and you want to know how you want to manipulate that particular piece of artwork uh to to work in conjunction with the eye of the person who's seeing it. So sometimes you just don't want to go in there and just start stamping and one you do not want to just hit one time. I see a lot of crafters out there who do that and this is what you come up with. You see how that's the wrong type of impression or indention in the into the leather so and it works pretty much the same way with your your 3d stamps or or even your your letter stamps you can't hit them too hard and it leaves an outline of the little box on your from your stamp on your piece and it can be um worked with where you can kind of get rid of that line in a little bit but really it's just to know how to get rid of it so now first things first some of you guys notice that I've worked with two two different sets of, of mallets. Uh, and they're different kind of mallets. They're different kind of malls. They're all different kind of weights. I have a, my heavyweight here, and then I have my, my polyurethane lightweight. This one here is probably about maybe four to six ounces, uh, more closer to four. I had this one per, uh, made. Uh, actually, I made it. Uh, it's from an old ball ping uh, handle. And then we took the ball ping off, and then we replaced that with the polyurethane here. And I got this piece. And if you guys are good, fortunate enough to have a local uh, chicken plant or processing plant around the, uh, where you live, they throw this type of stuff away all the time. I mean, and basically, once they've used it so much at the uh, eviscerating plants or the chicken processing plants, they throw this stuff away because it gets warped or it gets cut on too much or basically they've had it for a long time and to get rid of the potential possibility of disease or whatever from the chickens, they throw all of this stuff away for free. So you can go out there and get as much as you want. Uh, just talk to the management staff say, hey, look, you know, I'll help you guys out by throwing away I and mean, getting a couple of those pieces off. They'll give them to you. They gave them to me for free. Even my cutting board, if you guys can see this, my cutting board here was an old uh, cutting table from an eviscerating plant, a uh, chicken plant. And they were throwing it away, so I went out there, and that was actually an eight-foot board. So I have my... Um, my cutting board, I have enough cutting board for days. And this is pretty thick. Let me show you how thick that's it. Th th thick that is. You see that? That's at least about an inch, an inch and a half, or maybe an inch, inch and a quarter thickness. And what what I done, I went and picked it up. You know, just interjecting this real quick. What I done, I went up there, picked it up, then I went and got some uh Clorox bleach and just sprayed it down, killed any type of bacteria or whatever might have been growing on that, let it stay out. And, uh, and I probably sprayed it like every hour, just really coated heavy, real good, and just let the bleach run, run it off. But then I came back with a skill saw and just cut it to the size that I needed to work with on my table. Uh, the same thing, and I'll get off into that in another video. But back to beveling. So, um, when I, when I go into detailing on beveling, um, depending on what particular part of the artwork I really want to stand up. But the secret that I have found in the way that I was taught over the years uh, is to do rapid taps or what I call rapid firing. You just basically just just repeatedly tapping onto your tool, but as I'm tapping the tool, I'm also pulling the tool along my 
my my guide, my, my, my lines or whatever line that I'm trying to emphasize on the bevel. So let me show you how we do this here. And see how I'm just barely pulling that? And I'm going along with my tool so I can control it along the line that I'm using. And what this does here, if you've ever had the bevel before and you can see how uh, sometimes even when you pull in your tool, it still leaves that little line in there. You want to, you want your, your beveling to be smooth, very smooth, very smooth. And you just take your time and pull that along your, along your line, whatever line you have. And even if you want to, you can go back over that again, just to make sure that that line or those little small lines that came out where it is removed from that and just take your time now one tool is not going to bevel everything so this is why most crafters have an array of tools because now uh, in my corners I have this little jewel here my little triangle beveler you see how that's smooth on that end and has that point so now I can get up into the corners of my leaves to really make my leaves beveled out really bring out those, those little small corners of the leaf in any little crack it doesn't matter what it is what it's on um, any little uh, piece where you're tooling where that has a point or is very pointed and we're just doing a whole bunch of little rapid fires but I'm pulling that tool at the same time and it's key here also to keep your to keep your leather mist. Now again, which is another reason why I use a spray bottle. Now, I like using the spray bottle is because I can cover a whole lot of area with that instead of as opposed to using the sponge. Now you can use a sponge, but in some cases you don't want your leather to be soaking wet. And the sponge retains a lot of water. So <clears throat> that's why I just, you like using the spray bottle there. And you just keep turning your art piece or whatever piece that your project you're working on. And again, light mallet, rapid taps. And we're just basically just pulling that along the sides of it. Just along my, my lines that I cut. Some lines, now and again in another video I've done, I told you guys that every line doesn't have to be cut. Sometimes you can bevel. Now here's what I learned. Only cut the pieces in your artwork that you want to cause a separation. You understand what I'm saying? So everything else can be beveled and it's not a secret but it's a hidden secret a lot of the older crafters kind of keep because of the simple fact of that what separates or uh, that distinguishes your, your some pieces from some crafters you know they put a lot more work in the beveling as opposed to cutting and a lot of crafters want to go in and cut everything you don't have to cut everything now you see this is one of my bevel tools here and I showed you showed you this one here. Now I'm going to go to a different bevel tool, pretty much which is the same of same as this one, but it's a lot smaller. So this one can get into a lot of tighter places too. It can get into a lot of tight places. And we use the same technique with all of the tools to get them to do what we need them to do. Same thing. And this is the beautiful part about it because this is what really will separate your work from a lot of people. Now, on the larger areas, we'll go to an even larger beveler. just to go in and fix a lot of those lines and stuff same too 
or a different tool but the same technique and that what we really want to emphasize and raise and we're just taking our time beveling just to make sure that those little lines of the tool does not show up in our artwork we don't want that and then there are even some cases when I'll, I'll show you guys that where yeah, you can you still can cover those up with either a backgrounding tool you can you can cover those up with a backgrounding tool and uh, kind of take a, take the eye back away to focus on to the artwork and see I go back over that to smooth that out Now, does it take time? Yes, it does. It takes a lot of time. And you want, you want that to reflect in your work. The time and the attention, the detail that you put into it. And this is, again, this is why I always use this little short rapid taps. And just to show you guys how, see how that's going to stand out? Even in the corners of the leaf right there. And as opposed to this side here that's not even beveled. Even in, in inside of this little angelic little thing uh, picture up here to where we took the bevel and rounded that out. And then I'm going to go back and finish that up too. So, and then it, it just makes it, well now the, the great part about this, and we haven't even gotten to that part yet, is when, you, when I get ready to antique this, all of the part that I beveled is going to take on a different hue or shade when I start to antique this. So it's really going to emphasize and draw that. Your eye, and it's just human nature. Your eye is naturally drawn to the lighter portions of whatever you're looking at. It's naturally drawn to the light. So when we antique this and the the unbeveled part is which is going to appear the, as a light color as opposed to the bevel part which is going to be darkened just a little bit but your eye is going to be drawn to the natural the, the the light the lightest part of this picture and it's just going to make it just pop because it's going to look like the the beveled part is darker i mean and it's going to just oh man it, i'll show you guys and i'll post pictures later on down the road about this but hit the subscribe button down low um it's been a minute since I did some tutorial videos. I'm working on several other projects. I got a book that's coming out. Um, but you guys work with it. Start with something simple like a, a, a koi fish. Koi fish was one of the first pictures that I've ever uh, carved and tooled uh, when I was taking the classes down in Birmingham, Alabama. So, um, and just work with that. Learn learn how to take that bevel tool and go around the scales of the koi fish to where it makes it look just really, really original, uh, especially around the head of the koi to show that separation, you know, and, uh, and you can just take a basic design. You can go on Pinterest. Uh, you can go, you can Google just koi fish drawings and just play around with it. I always tell you guys, learn your tools and, and take your time and, and be very patient with your artwork. It'll really pay off in the end. This is Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad with another video about beveling, smooth beveling, and just that rapid fire tapping. You got the time to do it. Rapid fire tap, rapid fire tap. And just pull your tool along the way and just just guide it. That way you can make sure that you 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 beveling the part that you want to bevel. You know, hope this helped you guys out. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment down below or you can hit me up on Premier Leather Crafters uh, at yahoo.com or you can hit me up on Facebook at Premier Leather Crafters. Facebook, I'm all over there. Google my name, Premier Leather Crafters. I'm out there on the Google, on the, uh, Google search engine. You guys have a good day. Check this out. Come back and holler at me later on. Peace.